Thanks to Tony Schiavone, we've heard some great stories about Klondike Bill. <laughs> Tony speaks about the man lovingly, but has shared some hilarious, incredible stories in the process. Did you ever work on setting up a ring with Bill in your greenhorn days? Did he ever discuss props for a particular match, the shark cage at the bash, for example? And what we all want to know, can you confirm, as Tony puts it, that Bill was one of the greatest perverts of all time? Klondike Bill was the long-standing and retired undefeated NWA World Heavyweight Pussy Eating Champion. And yeah, and he was a world class pervert and a lovely man and a funny guy. And he had, he wrestled all over the world. But by this point, he retired and 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 uh, he were he and George Bunk Harris uh, worked for Crockett's for years. Uh, the ring crew and ring guys and and maintenance and et cetera, et cetera. And Bill actually is the one when I bought the ring that became the Smoky Mountain Wrestling Ring. It, we were in Charlotte, and Bobby Fulton had a, a wrestling school at the time. We stored the ring at his wrestling school, and Bill lived in Charlotte, even though he was still working for WCW. And I called him, and he came over several days and set the thing up in the parking lot and reconditioned it, cut new lumber for it, and painted the ring posts and tuned it up just right because he was a magician when it came to rings. Uh, so yes, uh, I, I actually, I didn't set one up with bill. Bill was, uh, kind enough to set mine up and fix it for me. Um, he was, he's on the, uh, on the wall at the big Texan steak ranch in Amarillo because they got the 72 ounce steak dinner. It's a 72 ounce steak, baked potato, salad, shrimp cocktail, and a roll. If you eat it all in an hour, it's free. Uh, in the early sixties, when he was working for the funks and Amarillo, he went in there and ate that and they gave it to him free. And then he, he ordered another one and ate that too, whole dinner. And he's on the wall and, and on the souvenir cup. Last time I went through there a few years ago, I got one of the souvenir cups and he's listed. Uh, he was fucking great. Just hilarious guy. We, we loved bill. George Harris was more grumpy and just, and, you know, and, and, and every story that he told began with, well, I was booked there and I had to, had to drive in my car with no air conditioning or no heat all the way there in the snow or the rain. And, and I was in the main event and we had a riot cause I got so much heat and then I got fucked on the payoff. But Bill's stories were always fun and always upbeat and everything, especially about, uh, you know, and he was, he was big with hotel maids. The, the uh, Klondike bill was the scourge of the hotel maid union industry. Uh, cause he was a master of conquering those those fields as well do you have a favorite Klondike bill story um well it just uh, oh the the one time remember the wcw power hour me and and jr would host it yeah and in the w in the tbs days and then funk's grill would be the interview segment friday but they'd night have right friday night power hour they'd have the wrestler of the week before we would sign off, we'd announce the wrestler of the week. And I started just for something to do on the standup, started grilling Jr. Uh, over a period of a few weeks. Well, who picks the wrestler of the week? Who decides this guy gets to be the wrestler? I want to know who picks the wrestler of the week, right? Who's got this much power around here? And finally, and we're just doing this on our own. Nobody's telling us to do it. And finally, I announced, ladies and gentlemen, I found out who picks the, the power hour wrestler of the week. And I, I'm going to have him here next week to answer some questions I've got. Well, I want, I had it be Klondike Bill, right? Because the story is, he, he's so funny to talk to in person, right? And he's so entertaining. I thought, just tell the story. I'll bring him out and say, Bill, how did you come to be the guy that picks up or picks the wrestler of the week? And he was supposed to tell the story that every week as part of his duties, he'd go by the office and he'd pick up the envelope. And, and, and bring it over so that we could read who the wrestler of the week was. But well, one day he, he just couldn't find where he put that envelope. So he just picked a wrestler and everybody seemed to like it. So he just kept doing it from then on, right? Just something easy to close the show with. We get out there on, we're doing it at the taping in front of the set they've got, you know, it's pre tape but it's, it's still in front of people and everything. And goddamn bill went blank. And he said, well, you know, and he's Canadian. He's well, you know. I went to the office, you know, and I got the envelope <laughs> and you know, this envelope, wouldn't you know, when you know about this envelope, so I started, well, Bill, are you saying the envelope had the name of the wrestler of the weekend? <laughs> yeah, that's what happened. <laughs> it had the name and well, you know, I, I was going to bring the envelope to you, but, 
but you know, when I, when I got here, well, you know, wouldn't you know, I said, you, you couldn't find the envelope, could you, Bill? <laughs> and he's like, no, no, I couldn't find it anywhere. <laughs> so what did you do, Bill? Well, I tell you, <laughs> I just, every time he would stem, stem and stem and haw, he would stammer and him and haw until finally I would utter the next piece of, of the exposition of the story. <laughs> And so I was telling him the story by the time we got finished with it on the, somebody find that clip. It may have been funnier to me now than it was then, but I thought it was fucking hilarious. <sighs> All right. Our next question. <laughs> I'm, I'm see that I'm alone in that assessment. Any other, I mean, I got to ask this because we have received several questions specifically asking about, I, I don't know what Tony tells people, but not the glass top coffee tables. No, it was, uh, I guess, oh. kielbasa on a girl and chewing underwear. And is there any, that's what people want. Is well, there any I, crazy? I, 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 look, I looked at Bill told some stories, but I did not act actively see him doing these. I think it was from his younger days. He was a kindly benevolent, uh, older gentleman at that point. But, uh, but he, he did enjoy glass top, uh, tables in the hotel rooms because that way you could lay underneath it and when the maid took a piss it was just it was like a kaleidoscope of <sighs> nevertheless well on this topic i have to ask you now because you 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 left the opening there there is a rumor that's gone around for so many years there's even art people have drawn pictures of it and put it on the internet about a glass table in mid-atlantic it's not Klondike Bill. It's usually the Rock and Roll Express walking into the room and witnessing. <laughs> I don't know how far I should go because I don't know how much you want me to say or not say about this. Is the, the, well, they, we could be a, a, a foul of the slander uh, laws, but um, but I, I've heard that. But part of a part of it also tells me that the story came from Ricky Morton, and there could be embellishment going on. <laughs> so I. I really cannot confirm or deny the veracity of any of these stories, except for Klondike Bill, who came right out and, and admitted it. 